Hey, everybody, welcome to the Gym Master Show Live. It's good to see all your smiley faces. Don't we have such a pretty logo there? We just love showing that. That's brand new. <laughs> We've been celebrating that, that cool logo, that expensive logo for our show open. How's everybody doing? Welcome to the show. It's nice to see you guys here. This is our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series where we're bringing back the lost art of conversation. We're doing it sort of old school style. You know, Dick Cavett, Johnny Carson, some of the, the veterans with a modern vibe, modern twist today. Uh, we've done around 640 episodes live seven days a week, which has been an extraordinary uh, task and undertaking, but we love it. We've met so many fabulous people just like you and you and you and you, and I think that's fantastic. You guys are so enthusiastic about our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. You've been sharing the links. You've been talking it up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and everywhere else. And of course, you guys know I work in television, radio, stage, and film professionally, have for years. Matter of fact, literally, I just flew in the door from a television news shoot that we had this morning. A guest flew in from Arizona, a guest expert, and we were in the TV news studio doing that. And then I took that hat off and brushed myself up, threw on the card again, and... Here we are for all of you. And you know what? We are so excited to welcome back to the Gym Masters Show Live, one of my favorite people, somebody that I met uh, many moons ago, actually, when I was tasked with being the host on PBS. And of course, you guys know I've worked with public television and elsewhere uh, for a long time. When they were bringing in Loretta LaRoche, yes, stress management expert, humorous author, and literally PBS star because she's done a wealth of public television specials and they so well received and she's so well received and with her wit and wisdom, mm -hmm. helping us get through life with humor and so much more. And she and I, we hit it off immediately. We were in the studio, we were live, phones were ringing in her special. We were on a couple of times together actually on PBS and her special was airing and I tell you, it, you know, I had some things that I had to do and say, but it was so hard to get through it because we were just laughing left and right. Now, I don't know if it's because we're both from New York originally. So maybe there's that sensibility, that humor. She from Brooklyn, me from out east on Long Island. Uh, we both happen to be in New England. It's funny how that is now. And um, she, her perspective is incredible. Her specials have been amazing. And again, you probably know uh, or remember a lot of them, but she has also had an opportunity to uh, be a published author on many different levels. And she is really there to make us all stop and think about the craziness and the idiosyncrasies of life. Now, <laughs> she's had to apply some of her own teachings uh, to herself today <laughs> because uh, her Wi-Fi, her internet, the router, all the crazy stuff have really tested her, uh, you know, patience a little bit. <laughs> but she is a trooper. She is an expert. <laughs> She's a fabulous person. Again, one of my favorite. And she, this is a return visit here on the Gym Masters Show Live for my friend uh, Loretta. There we are, actually. This was at an event uh, where she was, doing, you know, she, of course, she does all kinds of speaking engagements and shows and concerts and stuff. And she uh, was doing one. This was out in uh, the Cape Cod area and uh, Plymouth. And uh, we drove up to uh, Massachusetts. And uh, this was a post party afterwards and she was on fire that night as well and it was just absolutely spectacular so again we've known each other for a long time and again you probably recognize a lot of these different works that she's responsible for of course the joy of stress and uh, relax you only live once and get a life <laughs> that's what she wanted to say to the uh cable technician who was uh, there looking at her Wi-Fi uh, this morning, just get a life, fix the thing and get a life. And of course, life is short, wear your party pants. And again, life is not a stress rehearsal. These are again, just some of the many works. Lighten up, of course, you getting the theme here, how to be a wild, wise, witty woman. And uh, 
the Stress Buster Collection, Laugh Through Life, and on and on and on. Again, she's got a wonderful perspective on life, and she's just uh, she's a gem. It was so honored to have her back on the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series for a return visit. Let's welcome her. She has a beautiful sun kissed glow about her she's always radiating through the screen it is the one and only loretta laroche my friend how are you <laughs> oh i am just sad that i don't look as good as i used to <laughs> you look fantastic <laughs> you're going on, backwards are you kidding know, me they're never as happy with the way they look give me a break give <laughs> Give me a break. That's going to be the next book. Give me a break. <laughs> are you talking? Are you, wait, are you talking to God while we're, we're on? Yeah, I was talking. <laughs> or, or do you have an alter ego? I do. No, that was my son asking me what the password was for the house. <laughs> there's, a, there's a password for every stinking thing. I think if you have to go to the bathroom now, you have to give a password. <laughs> So as you're passing, you have to give a password. Give a password. You give the password. <laughs> so it's. Uh, I was telling our uh, our gym master show loveities, and uh, it was an interesting day for you. As you, I mean, you you've had. There's been snowstorms, all kinds of crazy stuff. It's life. Right. But today, your your internet has been giving oh. you a run for the money, and the tech came, and uh, like well, I said, didn't probably. Come. No, the tech never. No, they the canceled the tech. Even, they no, canceled it on you. They oh. can't. No, because they said they had fixed it, and I, I. They called me this morning. Well, I was laying in bed. It was like a quarter to eight, and this man says, "I think we have fixed your internet. You don't need a technician." <laughs> I said, "I need a technician. I need a technician." <laughs> 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 oh, it's all fixed. You don't need it. I, I, you know, I'm in the half awake. I said, okay, okay. So the thing was working for about an hour or two. And then bada boom, it left. Uh, and not, I, you I, you I didn't even started. get a bada bing. You just got a bada boom. I did. Bada <laughs> boom. Yes. I don't know how many hours I have spent on the phone to try to get it back. Uh, and if it wasn't for my, my son who has the technology, you know, the wizardly, technology yeah. that yeah. I don't have. Yeah. He got some kind of, uh, there's a hot spot on your phone. Isn't that sexy? You don't have to worry. <laughs> hot spot. It's on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> See all these years looking for that. Yeah, hot spot. Okay. It's always been on. on our phone. <laughs> yeah. Somebody says, you want to get it on? Yeah. Let's get my hot spot on the phone. So your son had to come over to discover your hot spot. Yeah, isn't that exciting? <laughs> I tell you, that is, uh, that's what it's about. It's How have you been? I mean, we've had this pandemic. We've had all these crazy things going on. I, I've just been dying to hear your perspective on all this. How have well, you been, my friend, with all this craziness? Well, for the most part, I just kind of shrug my shoulders and say, oh, well. <laughs> oh, yeah. well. Yeah. It could be worse. You know, my mother always said, you know, if you think this is bad, you haven't seen anything yet. Yes. And uh, <laughs> it was her way of, of assuaging me if I got uh, upset. Isn't that lovely? So you're always prepared, like you're ready for a terrorist uh, to come to your door. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> All the viewers are uh, welcoming you uh, back to the show, and they're so happy to see you here. And Kathleen in New York City. Yeah, <laughs> and we can see the crew behind you back there. They're doing their thing. I I hope they're making sandwiches back there behind you. Are they making? Oh, I don't know what they're doing. It, it, you know, I don't know. Oh, here we are. No, we're not here. They're making. Where are we? <laughs> that's, I'm going back and forth. <laughs> that, that that's the question. Where are we? Uh, where we where are we right now with all the craziness going on? Um. You well, know, I, the, everything has rack, ratcheted up stress yeah, levels in the United right. States. There, we're at, uh, I think, the tipping point for falling into the abyss. And yeah. if, you, if you've if you never trained your mind to be in the present, now's the time to try to do that. 
yes, yeah. there's a future you can hold on to if, if you if you need be, but you can't go back in time and say, oh, I wish it was like that. Well, it isn't. So you're wasting your energy thinking about something that's not possible. Yeah. And in the future, well, maybe it'll change. Maybe it won't. But right. so what you're doing is you're you're not living in the moment you're in. Right. You're living for a moment that doesn't exist yet. So are we always, and we've talked about this, even on the PBS specials, we we tend to always try to predict and or sometimes even create things that aren't really happening or we're just right. living on the edge in fear all the time? Well, that's the, that's the brain that uh, was uh, created during the Neanderthal days when you were yes. stalked by a behemoth. <laughs> <laughs> And a, a lot of people haven't moved forward uh, beyond that. So when they're in their car, they think that the person uh, in front of them is a behemoth and they have to really get rid of those people. As right, fast exactly. As possible. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what are some of the things that, um, since we chatted last, and again, I was mentioning to our lovely audience here, we welcome everybody watching around the world. If you'd like to comment live during the show, make sure that yeah, you uh, please, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can comment during the show. You can subscribe, subscribe to the channel you're watching right now, which is Jim Masters TV. It's that red button you see right there, gang. Just click subscribe and uh, yeah. click the notification bell so you never miss any of our fabulous episodes. What are some of the things since we chatted last that um, that great on you that that just uh -huh. really you still <laughs> just going to say Jim Jim you got a you got a couple hours or yeah I got a couple hours yes. uh, I think the total uh, lack of common sense in this society is is beyond my imagination because I grew up uh, probably in a very old fashioned way you know. Uh, you use common sense. You didn't need uh, a wheelbarrow that had a statement on it that said, do not use on the highway. Um, we now <laughs> have to worry about people maybe getting in a wheelbarrow and testing it out on the highway. Yes. Uh, we have uh, the milk carton says, pour here. Well, where else am I going to pour? I mean, right. you know. <laughs> What, what else yeah. am I doing? No, everything has to be told because we've become stupid. <laughs> yes, right. Yes. And there's a lot of books out now about the dumbing down of America. Yes. And yes. everything has to be told to you little line by line because what if you get in trouble? Uh, like I can't open the pickle jar unless I slam it against the counter. <laughs> it's, it's, it's triple wrapped. It's Yes. It's, I mean, yes. far, how many people are allergic to pickles? Right. <laughs> That's what I'd like to know. How about helping the poor elders whose hands are feeble to open the damn jar? I know. You need a wrench to open these jars. It used to be that it was sort of, uh, you know, childproof or whatever. Now it's people-proof. Everything it's is people-proof. People -proof. You can't even open up a mayonnaise jar. Or yeah. even sometimes if you open up a box of cereal and then they have that sealed plastic, oh, you're like, what? I mean, uh, do you want me to actually eat this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can't open anything without traumatizing yourself. You might end up in the emergency room because you tried to take a pen out of have, out of a wrapper. <laughs> So where do you think that fear is coming from? Why are we in this predicament, Loretta LaRoche? Because we're trying to protect everybody from, from, uh, from I don't know, maturity, from, yeah. from growing up, from learning yeah. how to take care of themselves. I mean, yeah. you can't, you have to adapt and you have to have resiliency to get through this crazy life. Yes. And if you're always protected from everything, yeah, how's that going to happen? Right. I mean, I've heard of, uh, young people going to a, a, an interview for a job, taking their parents. <laughs> one, one woman I read about took her cat. <laughs> <laughs> really? Now, if you, you went to your interview and you brought your mother or you brought your cat, 
What would have happened, Loretta LaRoche, at that time? <laughs> they, would have, they would have said, what are you, stupid? <laughs> they would have said, yeah, call Bellevue. <laughs> it wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have happened. Everything is, a, you know, and I understand if you're a parent, you want to protect your children. You want to do as much as you can to make them successful. But a lot of life is failure. Yes. And attempting to do things on your own until you get it. You know, yes, you got to get it eventually or it'll get through. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. For okay. those watching who are discovering you for the first time again, you and I have been friends for a long time and we've worked right. professionally. And I love when you come on the show, you just brighten up the day with your humor and you're, you're just, I love your way of thinking. Um, tell us about what first inspired you to even go into this work initially for folks who are again, discovering Loretta LaRoche for the very first time. Well, I've always had a, a predisposition to laughter. I mean, I laugh at everything as much as I can anyway. Yeah. Um, you have to laugh at the fact that your body is uh, turning into a, a folding chair. Um, <laughs> You know, as you get older, you better laugh. Folding chair. <laughs> no, yours will become a chaise lounge. Oh, man, really? Probably a chaise, yeah, with grapes that I'm fed by seven Nubians. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I just, I start, oh my God, this is ringing. I started reading a book. <laughs> now, did you ever think years ago you would have said when your cell phone goes off, oh, my God, this is ringing. Who's bothering me? Who the heck is that? Years ago, it was an event when the phone would ring in the kitchen. Everybody right. would get up and get excited. Somebody's calling. Oh, my God. Yeah. Somebody's calling. Now, now the phone rings and it's like, who the heck is bothering me right now? <laughs> Yeah, but now the phone rings and it could be somebody who's pretending to be somebody. Scam, scam calls all it day was long. Probably the technician overseas telling you, uh, we looked in further and your internet is not fixed. Yes, <laughs> and you have brain damage. We're, we're preparing a visit to a neurologist. <laughs> So, uh, so you were saying you were talking about some of the things that okay, inspired you to do this fabulous work you do, Loretta. Yeah, Norman Cousins was one of the people that I felt was a mentor to me because uh, I read his book that discussed how humor helped him heal from something called ankylosing spondylitis, which is a very, very painful illness uh, associated, I believe, with rheumatoid arthritis. And he decided to go in when he went into the hospital uh, to look at funny movies, read jokes. And he actually decided to leave the hospital and go into a hotel room so he could watch Candid Camera and have people visit him and make him laugh. And his sedimentation rate dropped, which is a, a benchmark for infection and illness. And it started to go down. And so he began researching the effects of humor on the body and that your killer T cell count rises when you're laughing and having fun. And I thought, wow, this is for me. I can't wait to figure out how to do this, how to get people to look at how they behave, how they think, and how it could change and actually repair their bodies and minds. And so that's where I'm coming from. It's like, if you're not laughing at all, you're clinically, you're depressed. And the less you laugh, the less you laugh, and pretty soon they have to take you away and you'll end up making baskets and taking drugs. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, does it seem like a lot of people are not laughing they're hurting they they d don't know how to laugh anymore do you find that to be um 
the case. I mean, you, yes. you're very good. One of the things I love about you is not only the humor and the approach, but you're very good at, at being able to study the situation and study people and, and what's going on around. And there's so much overload of information. There's, there's so much, uh, everything's breaking news. There's just all of this going oh. on. The technology as well, which I know is your favorite thing. <laughs> so there's all these things, and we are supposed to be an expert at everything and and know everything and do everything 24 seven. How is that impacting our psyche, our society, and even how we're relating to each other, if we're even relating to each other at all anymore? Well, we're not relating to each other the way we once did, the way I did. People used to come in and out of the house all the time to visit. Nobody, you, you left the door open. Nobody knocked on the door or anything. It just came in. And they always sat down and had uh, maybe a glass of wine, a bowl, some spaghetti, whatever. And little by little, we have seen the recidivism in this type of connection. And what it's done is create an am am amount of loneliness heretofore not seen. And that's why so many people are on antidepressants, especially children, because connectivity improves longevity. You know, you can make all the kale smoothie, smoothies you want, but if you're pissed off and alone and drinking them by yourself, you're going to die sooner. That's... <laughs> <laughs> Folks, I love it because she, she cuts right to the chase. I mean, you, you don't even have to visualize it. I mean, it's right there. It's so true. It's so it's so true. Um, what are some of the things that you've been doing during the pandemic, all this craziness, to stay connected, collaborative, and creative? Uh, how have you mastered, you know, uh, this time? A lot of people have been saying it's been a time of reflection, right. a time of looking at our lives, what we want to do going forward. For some people, it's been a great resignation. They're doing other careers. Uh -huh. They want to do things that inspire how about you? Uh, during this time where we've been in the houses and not right. communicating, what have you been doing to stay, you know? Well, I've always been a self-amuser because I'm a, I was an only child. So uh, I, I didn't have time to complain uh, about much because I came from the old times where, you know, you had to clean your room. <laughs> you had to yes. My mother would go to work. She'd come home earlier in the afternoon so that I wouldn't flagrantly display myself in the neighborhood and make her embarrassed. <laughs> uh, I learned how to cook. Uh, I, I had to be, you know, doing things that she couldn't do. And it was, that's what I learned to do and read. I always read. My mother had a vast library. And even at 11, I was reading Somerset Maughan uh, poetry. I used to write poetry. I used to listen to the radio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there was right. an old it didn't have TV. I didn't even have a TV till I was 12. Really? Yeah. You yeah. had to use your imagination. I mean, there's exactly. probably people watching and saying, is she in the museum, the Smithsonian? <laughs> 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 but I was a self amuser and yeah. that has stayed with me. I mean, during the pandemic, uh, I got COVID. I got a pretty bad case of it. I know. My partner had it and he had to go to the hospital and he got AFib from it. Mm. And I was alone here in the house mm. for about five days with yeah. my friend, the COVID. Um, but see, I amuse myself by talking to my friends on the phone, not yes. always thing. Yes. So I can hear an emotion in a voice. Yes. With, and I don't need, I don't want to see an emoji with you uh, smiling. <laughs> I mean, that's all well and good, but also every uh, weekend I would have a Zoom call with some of my friends, So, and we'd have cocktails while we talked. <laughs> yeah, and, that's you know, terrific. I did a lot of reading. Um, I don't know. I just enjoyed what I had. I mean, my partner and I, once we were well, we did – uh, take little rides here and there or go to a restaurant uh, where we, we called and said, is there anybody there? Yes. Anybody there? <laughs> Nobody's there. <Yeah>. With them. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> <laughs> and 
And we actually would stand outside and eat so that we were at least a hundred feet away. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Did you bake a lot of sourdough bread like everybody else? No, <laughs> no, no. I, my, I come from a family that had a, a bakery. My grandma, grandfather, yes, they had yeah. a bakery. So I always had the most outstanding bread. Oh, yeah. uh, but it wasn't sourdough. It was Italian with little little sesame seeds on the top that my grandmother would make me put on the dough to amuse me. <laughs> Did you have to count them too? <laughs> sure. I didn't have to, I didn't have to toys like they have today. No. What did that you have? Makes me, that, 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 that makes me, you know, better than anybody, but do kids need all those toys? And they're all plastic and we're all complaining about plastic. What happened to wooden toys? What happened to them? Somebody had those last, they last for a long time, wooden toys. Instead of all those plastic things, whatever the heck they are. Yes, exactly. Yes. A couple of people uh, are asking about if they were to start to read your books, um, what would be the first, like Lisa was saying, any recommendations of your books to start with first? If well, they want to get your collection, and again, the books, there's also DVDs, folks. She's well, it's everything. <laughs> and seminars and, yeah. and, and PBS specials she's done and, and all kinds uh -huh. of fabulous works. Uh, uh, an incredible legacy and body of work is available. Uh, but if they wanted to like dive in oh, to the yeah. Loretta LaRoche world, what should be first? I would read Life is Short, Wear Your Party Pants, especially in this day and age what, with what we're going through. That would really be helpful because it uh, uh, sort, of, sort of looks at all the uh, framework of stress and, and how to engage in it, whether it's cognitive or just fun and how important laughter is and how important it is to have meaning. You know, that's the thing. People are happier when they have some meaning in life. What, something that gets you out of bed that says, whoopee, right. I'm gonna try that again today. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. right? Exactly. I mean, if you get out of bed and all you care about is how awful it is out. Oh, look at it, it's raining again. Oh my God, what are they doing now? Uh, that's not gonna help your brain. No. And that's not to say I don't do some of this. I am not infallible. I can complain a lot of times with the best of them. <laughs> but you know what my career helped me do? I became a witness to it. I understand it. I know where it's coming from. And I say, okay, enough of this. Let's go eat a sausage. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so you... Uh, it was a very funny thing for those watching uh, we, when you were on and I was on and we were on together. Again, this is your second visit on the Jim Master Show Live, but when we were on PBS television and we were talking about all kinds of incredible things and, and, and tasks and habits. And I remember one of them when you and I were laughing before we went live about um, something is basic. And it's really amazing because during the pandemic, there was this sudden shortage of it all of a sudden. I tell you, talk about, you know, really bringing it down to the nitty gritty, you know, toilet paper on the roll, oh, yeah. whether or not it has to come from over or under. Oh, and you would ask me live with everybody in the studio and the phones ringing off the hook. And it was fantastic. And the director talking in my ear and so, Jim, do you, does it matter for you if it's over or under? And I said, I do tend to like it coming from over because from under, sometimes it, it pulls against the wall and gets stuck, you know. And you're like, so that, so that really does concern you, huh? And it, it just, and then the whole place erupted in laughter. And, it was in, and then the phones were even on fire even more. It was just terrific. Sometimes well, we can get hung up on the basic stuff, right? Well, we have, you know, we all have these little behaviors that make up who we are. And uh, to, de to deny uh, ourselves of all of them leaves us uh, without ourselves. You know, yes. that's what makes you who you are. And it, it can be fun. And as long as you can, as, I, as the Buddhists say, become a witness to your behavior 
and maybe laugh at it a little bit yeah. or share it with other people who can laugh with you at yourself if you give them permission. But people who can't laugh at themselves are basically not well. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Because yeah. it gives you perspective. Laughter is the conduit to perspective. Yeah. And if you can't laugh, then you cannot see what is really going on around you. And we live in a society today that is absent from, a lot of people are absent from that, that all they want to do is be right. Yes. See, I'm, yeah. see, I'm right. You know, the toilet paper has to go on one way and that's it. And that's it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes. We seem to be, yeah. And there's a lot of division and a lot of ah. us versus them, them versus us. That must be driving you crazy. Cause I know it drives me crazy. Oh, well, I feel sorry for people like that because they're not living in a world where they are able to live and in, and in, in, in live in a circuitous way mm -hmm. to look at, at an idea or a person's opinions in a circular fashion, look at it from all angles and then make your conscious decision on how you want to proceed. But if you just keep saying it, that's the way it is. That's the way it is. It's not, that's it. <laughs> So what are you, you going to have? You're yeah. living in a cult. You might as well start a cult. Get your robes <laughs> and your, <laughs> your hat and your jewel yeah. and start prophesizing. Start prophesizing. You uh, and we were we were uh, teasing one another before we went live because of the, your you know that technician with the internet and all that crazy stuff that you've been going through there uh, out on the, the beautiful uh, coastal uh, Massachusetts area. Um, talking about uh, squeezing and ah. how oftentimes uh, we end up doing that. And we're not talking about the Charmin either. Uh, wow. and, and we don't realize we're doing that. Wow. Uh, tell us about some of that. Well, I'll tell you a funny story and I suppose I can say most anything here except for four letter words. Um, I decided, you know, that I should be more environmental with toilet paper. So I ordered a whole case of bamboo toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm sorry to say I was trying to move in the right direction, but um, I thought I was going to actually have to go to the ER with lacerations. Um, <laughs> because the one I picked was a little rough. I probably could have been sandpapering the deck with it. Um, so it you could have put a, it in the wok and cooked it up and made a Japanese dish, <laughs> bamboo shoots. That's absolutely true. <laughs> but, you know, I, I don't know. So that I, I ordered the, the bamboo, but uh, I, I went back to... Uh, sort of, you know, a more uh, soft paper. But I, I don't know, why do people get so upset about it? Uh, people used to have to use leaves. We're not using leaves yet. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes a leaf, if we do, not even leaves. They had exactly. To use, they I had mean, to use leaves. I, I had children at the time where you used uh, cloth diapers. And you had to soak them in the bath, in the toilet, and, and yeah. then wash them. And uh, yeah. I mean, you know, we have moved forward a little bit. Gary's asking me in Iowa if I roll or squeeze the toothpaste, toothpaste tube. Well, <laughs> what do you do, dude, Loretta? <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, see, I, I love all what's happening. The dentist uh, wanted me to get this special toothpaste because I don't know. I have dry mouth now. Everything's drying up. As you get old, you turn into powder in a jar. <laughs> that's, that's how people can you're just, not, just open it. <laughs> it. Your internet's not working, but yet you've got dry mouth. <laughs> <laughs> everything's drying up, everything. And uh, so he told me to get this toothpaste, and it's in it's in a little jar with a lid. First of all, I had to practically... Uh, kill myself to open the lid. It was so many pieces of paper holding it down. And then to get it out, I had to shake it, bang it. And it's it's like almost like a, it coagulates after a while, after a couple of days. So to try to get it out, it's in, in, almost impossible. 
I mean, so many things are made that can't be used. Did you get a hernia over the whole thing? Oh, I practically did. <laughs> so now my mouth is still dry and I have a hernia. <laughs> <laughs> You have this one, I remember, with one of the PBS specials, and the PBS specials are fantastic. Uh, you're talking about, you know, how sort of that that lion sort of thing that happens to us when the minute we get in our cars, the oh, minute yeah. we get in our car. Now, we, you know, the, it's funny. You get somebody who gets in their car in a truck and they're on your tail or they're chasing you out of the lane or whatever's going on. And the, you know, there's rage and all this stuff. And, and it's like, they're, they're huge, you know, in your mind because of the vehicle right. they're in and the intimidation or whatever. And then they step out of the car and they're three foot two. Right. <laughs> the, the rage and the road rage and all of that sort of, well, it's, uh, I don't know if you've seen it in your area, but I really feel that, um, uh, rage has escalated tremendously we we have people are just nuts on the road now yes. cutting you off and giving you yes. the finger yes uh yelling and, and what what is the point right. uh, you may get there ahead of me you may not but right. the only place you're hurrying to get to is your demise that's exactly what I say. It's I, that's why I say we are kindred spirits. I say, what are you rushing to? You're, you know, the faster you go, the quicker you go to your demise. Exactly. exactly. So yeah. slow down. You know. Well, and um, I always tell people, you're only here to distract yourself till you die. Right. <laughs> now, how do you want to distract yourself? Do you want to have fun? Do you want to enjoy your life? Do you want to solve problems, or do you want to make yourself nuts? Yes. And die, and die sooner because you'll have a stroke or a heart attack because your blood pressure is going high. Yes. So you see, this, are, is, this is where this, common sense comes in. This is where common sense comes in. Exactly. Um, so where, what, what is one to do? What, what is, uh, what's something that if somebody's all caught up in a lot of this, they could do today to sort of ease some of this stress and craziness and overwhelm people everybody feels so overwhelmed yeah. and they're all you know they're following what everybody else is doing um and, and wanting to you yeah. know sort of emulate everybody else get some perspective look back in time do you think people were overwhelmed when they lived in grass huts uh, during the medieval days or during attila the hun when he came swept through and torched your hut i mean we really aren't living in a time uh, of horror, you may think that in your head. There are some people who are much more disadvantaged than 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 than, than some others. But create a, an appreciation board in your house. Write down what you have that you love and and things that you enjoy, and yes. try to think of them first before yes. you go to World War Three in your head. Right. <laughs> Right. You know, think about fun. Be the fun you're seeking. Don't always think about when you're going to have fun because you might be dead before you even have one bit of fun. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> fun yeah. is a very powerful antidote to stress. Yes. And it doesn't have to be organized. It can be in the everyday by talking to people, by uh, laughing at yourself, uh, go out and buy some costumes and wear them periodically to show off your ridiculous nature. <laughs> yes, and and you've done that too. You you come out yeah. usually with your uh, with your shows and uh, seminars and even the television specials. Uh, you come out with all of these. One of them is almost like a Viking looking. With right, the helmet. Viking hat. Yes, that's for control freaks. Yes. People who have to be in charge. You know, buy yourself a, a hat with horns and, and run around the house and tell everyone <laughs> that you're in charge. Yeah. <laughs> I am everybody. here. I have arrived. Right. I have arrived. And, you know, everybody knows it anyway. They make fun of you when you're not around. So you might as well make fun of yourself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's right. Exactly. Yes. Yes. And fun. Fun is very preventative and helpful. It helps the immune system. Fun. 
Yeah. Because you're, yeah. you're more in the moment. The, the sort of the elixir of laughter yes. helps you yeah. feel better. Uh, watch funny movies. Don't watch the news so much, for God's sake. Mm -hmm. It's always the same. Always yeah. the same. It's the same stuff, right? Exactly. Yeah. I've been awful. I, 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 the commercials are driving me crazy. There isn't a, one illness or a wart that doesn't <laughs> have something <laughs> that takes care of it. You know? Right. And, and the side to... effects of that are 10 times worse than oh. the wart. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Death is the last one. <laughs> May cause death. You have a wart. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the wart's going to grow until it encompasses your entire body and you look like an alien. Um, why not? How about some commercials like eat carrots? <laughs> or, right. or, or enjoy or the death. This is... This is how you can feel better. Yes. No, it's always fear, fear, fear. And this is what's happened. This is why we have the anxiety we have. The fear has been made the pinnacle. Yes. The top of the mountain now is fear. Yes. Is fear, right, exactly. And, and fear uh, means control, too. When people are fearful, right. they're, they're, they're easily sort of controlled in a way. Exactly. Right? and they lose control. Um, some of the things that you've talked about over the years, which still continue to apply are really, really extraordinary. When you first came out with the joy of stress, how to prevent hardening of the attitude. I love that. Uh, tell us about that. There, there's a number of people watching around the world who are, are like, I'm loving this and I'm going to order her books or DVDs. They're already, the audience is very proactive and they're going to do you know, that. What, what, what I just want to uh, integrate here is the fact that I did a TED talk. Yes. And it's almost at a million Oh, fantastic. And, you know, they can see me on, on, on TED, on the TED Talk. On the TED Talk uh, website, yes. And, and what was um, the, uh, what, give us a little tease as far as what the your theme and your topic was about. Well, it was, it was about, you know, how to prevent hardening. It, it was, life is not a stress rehearsal. Right, <laughs> right. And uh, it, it's a lot of, you know, what we're discussing and some of the things you can do to uh, help your stress level. Yes. And I never thought it was going to get to be that many views. And that, that uh, means of your, course, your, your message I, I, is needed. That's why. Well, I was at the end of the at end of the day doing it. Um, I looked like a hobbit. <laughs> I wasn't really at my best. <laughs> And, you know, I look at it and I say, oh, my God, uh, I, I don't look, I look awful, blah, blah, blah. You know, this is your inner gremlin. It's always attacking you. Right. You know, 6,000 thoughts a day, and most of them are absurd. But that really is a, is a good format for people to look at, the TED Talk. Yes. Now, the joy of stress. I had to beat the, the walls to get on PBS, to get them to recognize that humor was going to be a good thing for them to put on PBS. Well, I don't know. We don't do humor. Uh, we don't, you know, I don't know how good that's going to be. And I, Finally, they decided to do it. It was taped live. I mean, I had no editing in it, nothing. It went live. And so I had to know every single thing I was going to say before I, I did it and not make one mistake. And it was my first ever TV pro, uh, show. And of course, I asked my mother to come, who at, the at that time, I don't know how old she was, probably my age. <laughs> and <laughs> what do you think she said with her Sicilian drama? Comes <laughs> over she said, don't embarrass me. <laughs> this is just before I go on television for my very first time. Don't embarrass her. <laughs> Don't embarrass her. Right. What? No, wonder, no wonder I'm nuts. <laughs> I was going to say, were you speechless or did you have a response? I didn't say anything because, you, you know, say, what's, the yeah, right. <laughs> what's the point? What's the point? <laughs> her and the nuts that I had to deal with probably fall into a lot of my personality. 
of today. That's the way, you know, I learned how to deal with these people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> so the joy of death went on and it proved yeah. to be a big win. It, yes, absolutely right. Because you were you were touching upon things that a lot of people just didn't discuss. They weren't discussing it. They weren't bringing it up. No. It wasn't something that's a dinner table talk about these things. And you were bringing it out with the use of humor. And what I like about it is, you know, some people, they do things like that or they attempt to. And it's forced humor. They're generally wow. not funny people inherently. And yeah. you can see they're trying to force the joke and force humor into these right. things with these underlying messages where you are inherently hilarious, funny, witty, and fast. And you can blend the message with the humor. And I think that makes it much more relatable for people, digestible for people. And it, it lingers longer for people because of the humorist that you are and that humor aspect that is weaved in. And uh, I think it's a brilliant combination that you don't see done really no, at don't. all at all, or anybody that tries it. Is it really as effective? I think in the way that well, you've mastered. What I, what I did was I, I love cognitive behavioral therapy. You know, that's to me the, 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 the most, the most beneficial format for reframing your thinking. And uh, I took that and married it to humor. And so it's not just, uh, I'm not a stand up comedian. I'm basically someone who has a lot of psychology in her background, who, as I said, marries it to humor. And that's what got me in the door at the Mind Body Medical Institute, which was part of the Harvard system that I was there for 15 years using, helping people to use humor to, to reframe their stinking thinking. <laughs> Cause that's what we all have. Yes. Yes. What is that? How do you define that? What's well, really irrational thoughts. You know, it's the mind loves to grab on to fear because yeah. that's the old brain, the reptilian brain was positioned to help you uh, get through life, yeah. you know, thousands of years ago. The brain has evolved to a certain degree where now you have other aspects of the brain to help you and not catastrophize and awfulize the way we used to, but still it's there. There's, that's a big chunk of, of how we think. Yeah. I mean, how many of us will start to catastrophize just standing in a line at the supermarket? Oh, I'm never going to get out of here. Look at all these people. What are we going to do? Oh, my God. I shouldn't have come here now. I don't know why I came here. i I, I got to get out of here so I can be someplace else I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so we're not fully present because we're too busy uh, scaring, the, scaring ourselves to, to death. Yeah. And right. it, the supermarket, I love, I love to listen to the people in the supermarket. And I, this is an old uh, story I use about a woman who was in back of me pawing the earth like a bison and uh, going out of her mind, harumphing. And she said the most ridiculous thing, but you didn't even know she said it. So every time I come in here, it fills up with people. I said, that's really odd. And she looked at me quizzically and she said, what do you, what do you mean? I said, well, I think it's a plot. The manager goes in his office and he calls people up so they can annoy the hell out of us. And she didn't get it. All she could do was eh, 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 because she was squeezing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he calls the people up to <laughs> specifically irritate her. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Now... That's that is a good example of what a lot of things are like these days where people think that everything is it's an a attack plot. and an attack on them. And then, you know, right. you're attacking, you know, everything, my freedom, everything. And this and that and whatever it is from whatever. Everything, you know, everything my, my, is an attack. Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, so so how do how do you work through 
that kind of a situation. Well, is that the way you want to live your life? Constantly being uh, a, 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 a vigilant about everything that's going on around you. I mean, if you have a specific cause and it's viable and it's going to be meaningful and help you and, and humanity get involved. Right. But if it's all of this craziness, you're wasting your time. Yes. It's, it's not helpful to you or anyone around you. No, exactly right. Exactly right. And of course, relax, you only live once is another one. And there's another one of our fantastic hats. Tell us about <laughs> that one for folks that are watching who are like, oh, I, I didn't know about this one. Yeah. Uh, I don't even remember what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Not only do you relax, you only live once, but Loretta is only going to say it once. <laughs> this well, you know, you're, get you're, a pretty life. Funny. you're pretty funny, Jim, you know? I appreciate that. <laughs> I, you know, I've always said it would be fun to do some kind of a little internet show with you. We have to. Yes, I really would love to do that. But you got to get that Wi-Fi straightened out. They got to get that technician <laughs> over there. We can't. I know. If we did it, we can't hear only every third word you're saying because your internet I goes know. in and out. Is but, it working now? Oh, my God. Yeah. Your son said oh, you're good. on. The son said you're on 5G. Did you well, ever think that you'd be on 5G? No, no, I, I, I don't know. I thought we were looking for the G. <laughs> you, you, found, you found the hot spot. I love this. Get a That's very, Get Yeah, a this is going to make my whole night. Yeah. <laughs> so when you came up with Get a Life, and this, of course, uh, DVD as well, what were you thinking? What was, what? Uh, oh, that, that was kind of a wellness uh, yeah. model. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't just me. It was other people that we got involved who had issues that, they wanted to handle like weight or stress or yeah, yeah. Uh, several other things. I mean, I don't think that was uh, a bestseller. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wellness is not something that uh, I think we pursue in this society. <laughs> no, no, not yeah. at all. Right. Uh, exactly. We're much more. Yeah. We don't talk about it very often. I mean, now mindfulness has become uh, pretty much. Uh, a subject that people uh, look at or uh, gotten involved in, but sometimes it gets so complex and that's why it eludes some people because they think they have to have a certain cushion. They have to get themselves into a position. Uh, they have to breathe right uh, and say the right mantra. And so, you know, sometimes they don't do it because they think it's too complex and it isn't, it's not complex at all. It's about breathing for the most part. Yes. And and uh, and just being in the uh, trying to be in the moment, just getting rid of those thoughts, let them pass through you, and yes. say, "Oh well, oh well, there I go again." There I go again. Yeah. You, you don't have to get into the lotus position, so you need to go to the hospital. Um. <laughs> <laughs> that is <laughs> that is so very very true. Uh, here's another one: life is not a stress rehearsal. Yeah, and there you are. You, it looks like you're ready for battle. You got everything there. The calculators. Yeah. I mean, look at that. Look at how old those things are, though. Can you imagine what they've been? <laughs> look what they've been replaced with. Time flies, huh? Uh huh. So, uh, now we don't need any of those gadgets. We, we no. just, you know. But still, the the um, the message is the same. That it is not a stress rehearsal, right? Yeah. It's. Uh, uh, when you put this together, uh, what were you? What was the thinking with this one? Because this was another fantastic one. Well, that's when we were sort of putting our, our toe in the water yeah. uh, with multiple gadgets. Yes, and, and uh, you know you had to have a gadget for everything, and it hasn't changed. It's just grown. Yes, uh, exponentially. I mean now. Uh, I, I don't know which thing to grab first. Should I do the iPhone? Should I be on the iPad, the computer, um, my Roku, my Poku, my... <laughs> my, <laughs> uh, my emoji. I need to make an emoji of myself. Uh, 
I can't just send a picture of me. I have to have a picture that might be me, but it isn't me. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Instagram world and TikTok. Oh, yeah. What do you oh. think about TikTok and all that? Uh, I don't know. It's You know what it is all about? It's about look at me, look at me, look at me. You see me? So people spend more time taking a picture of where they are than being where they are so that they can see it later. Oh, I think I'll look at that later to know where I was. <laughs> <laughs> and of the food, too, that they're eating at oh. the diner. Yeah. People should you not take, you take pictures. you take pictures of your food? Or do you no, just eat it? You no, know, it doesn't look good. <laughs> it doesn't look good at all. You should not. You should not post pictures of food. I, I just doesn't come out right. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true, and, and, right? <clears throat> how did we get so narcissistic? That's what I want to know. Where did that all come from? Where everybody's keeping up? It used to be people would want to keep up with the Joneses, but now they want to offer up images of themselves that don't even match what you see when you bump into them in the supermarket. They don't quite look like those photos they posted. They want to be, uh, they want to be important. They want to be looked at. It's all, I, I don't get it. I don't know. And they have to tell you everything they did, everything. Oh my God, I was so busy. I had to go to the dentist and I flossed this morning, but I didn't have the right floss. And now I have to go, I have to go to the gynecologist. I don't know. I don't think I like that. And I have to get my, my pap smear and my, uh, I mean, come on. Just do it, right? <laughs> no, tell, me, tell me something interesting. I don't care about your pap smear. <laughs> Well, no, how long it took you to floss your teeth? I mean, really? <laughs> but we do know about your bamboo toilet paper that didn't work out. <laughs> true. That was rather mundane, wasn't it? That was Ooh, a yeah. rough. That was a rough situation. <laughs> now, how did you? What did you do? Did you ship it back? And was, was that something that's refundable? <laughs> no. no. I have a, I got I bought a case naturally because I always do everything over so the top. Were they uh were they the stocking stuffers this year for the family? Not <laughs> You're all yet. getting bamboo. <laughs> I tell you though, it's great to exfoliate your skin. <laughs> You'll get really close to the bone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So uh, what are some of the things that you're working on and that you're doing and that you have coming up? I know, you know, a lot of things have paused for a lot of people and things are starting right. to reinvigorate now. What are some things that you're excited about that you're working on now? You're always working on something, Loretta. I, I don't know. I'm working on myself. <laughs> I have to have uh, my shoulder replaced. That's fun because I had four other implants. That's from uh, teaching aerobics for 20 years. I pounded the, the literal you-know-what out of myself. Um, you know, I entertain writing another book, but something maybe for children. Uh, I'd like to write something called Ta-da Today, Tomorrow's Too Late. Um, I've been thinking about that. I've been thinking about doing more things on Facebook Live. Uh, I post every day. Um, I'm still doing shows. I mean, I, I, I do a lot of Zoom workshops. Yeah. I um, have several uh, I'm doing in, in April. And uh, people still call me. I told my son, I said, gee, when they look me up, do they think I'm dead? I mean, you know. <laughs> still alive. Here I am. Mm. How do you like the whole Zoom thing? I don't. Uh, and I'll tell you why. As a woman who's been on stage for God knows how long and and been really good at it because I have a real good sense of the energy that's in front of me. So my my the way I navigate the audience is by what I see and feel. And on Zoom, you don't get any feedback because a lot of people hide themselves. The last Zoom thing I did, I was looking at myself the whole time. 
And I have to say that halfway through, I said, man, I'm out of here. I got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick of myself. <laughs> I mean, I did it. And it was okay. But you don't get any feedback. No feedback. And, and we try to tell people, please let Loretta see some faces. So, so she gets a little energy back to her. Right. So I, I, what about you? Do you like Zoom? Uh, as opposed to being, you know, the, the television studios and on stage and all the rest. Uh, eh, you know, this is great for this format for what I do with the Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series, which is terrific. And then coming from that television background, you know, it's easy for me to to do it and grasp it. But I don't think I would want to conduct my entire day on Zoom. Right. Um, although it would cut down on the dry cleaning bills because <laughs> who knows if we're wearing pants. <laughs> right, right. That's it. So, you, could be, you could be naked from the waist down. Could cut the dry cleaning down by 50% at least. <laughs> I mean, I, I was lucky to, to still be working. Yeah. Uh, but it's just not the same. Uh, yeah. Well, you, I mean, whether it was, you know, wh whether it is in the television studios or on stage, you work the audience, you work right. the stage and you move about, you need yes. to move about, you have different props, different things, you, yes. you know, you may call upon the audience themselves, you look at their facial expressions, you see like, you know, if somebody's got a glazed look or somebody's really invigorated, whatever it may be, and you can that's all part of the whole thing. And it's, it is tough when, you know, you have the zoom sort of situation to really make that super effective. Right. right? Oh God. Yeah. Because they don't realize that you need to see some faces. I know a lot of them just don't want to be sure. I think because they're probably not there. They left. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They just walked away from it. <laughs> no, who knows? Uh, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. But it's not my favorite thing to do. No, you're you're a people person. As for you know, you need you feed off the energy of the of the people and the sounds, and, and I right. do as well. I am communal in that way, and I feed off the energy of what's going on around me and react to that energy. You may That's you right. may have you may have a plan set, but then these things happen around you, and then you pivot and you react yes. immediately to what you're seeing happen in front of you. Spontaneity spontaneity exactly that's, that's part of my personality i come out with things that i don't even know where they came from i right. say oh, that was good i should have wrote, written that down <laughs> <laughs> yes yes i i do that too and it's uh sometimes yeah. you, sur you surprise yourself right i do i surprise myself <laughs> <laughs> that's what makes it fun that's what makes it fun. I don't have that's planned. Get, I don't plan every every stinking thing that's coming out of my lips. No, no, no. You are blessed uh, with a wonderful family. Um, oh yes. And and kids and grandkids and and the and whole great thing. grandchildren and great grandchildren as well. How how does that enhance your life, Loretta? Well, uh, it makes you realize how long you've been around. <laughs> It's great. It's nice to see uh, your your progeny, you know, your your family growing and 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 doing good and and having fun. Um, I haven't always been around to be the grandmother that uh, maybe they wanted me to be because of my career, but uh, I still have you know uh, a bond with them and I get along with them and we talk and. As they've gotten older, I think they've gotten to realize uh, who and what I am. So uh, I think they've become more connected because they figured their grandmother's a nutbag. I was just about to say, if we were to ask them who and what you are from their perspective, what would they say? That? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> you know, my grandmother's kind of nuts. <laughs> But we love her dearly and we wouldn't want anybody else, right? Yeah. Well, who knows? I try not to get into the nitty gritty of asking all those questions. <laughs> <laughs> Just dinners at six. See you then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
That is funny. What What are some of the things that bring you joy? I mean, you for years you've done so much to bring joy. I have to other been a lot and been yeah, with some I, very spectacular people. You know, I've worked with presidents and prime yeah, ministers yeah. and doctors and nurses and movie stars and you know, you too. You you've done it. Blah, 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 blah. I don't really talk about that much to people because I find it a level of arrogance when people give me their whole uh, menu of who they've been with. Right. Uh, but I, I, the things that bring me joy are stuff like being able to have conversations with people I, I care about. Learning. I'm a big learning nut. Uh, I love to learn new things. Um, Having a partner who's a jazz musician has has brought me a lot of fun because uh, he and I made a uh, an album together. You can actually get it on uh, Pandora. It's called oh. I Concentrate on You. Oh, and fantastic. Uh, yeah. I, I had the privilege of having uh, some pretty uh, spectacular musicians, uh, a couple who've played with Tony Bennett and... Uh, mm -hmm. So that's one of the things, and I'm I might do another recording. I'm working on that because I love I love jazz standards and all of that, the big bands, the jazz, all of that. That's really cool, and that brings me a lot of joy. Um, reading, I love to read. I love to read new things. I just I just got a book about uh, the power of fun, which I thought, oh, she's on my wavelength. <laughs> I got to read this. Um, and I'm, I don't know, I'm always thinking of cooking. I love to cook. It's a little harder now having a shoulder that uh, isn't working the way I want it to, but I still do it. And I complain while I'm doing it. Oy vey, I'm chopping. I don't know what I'm going to do with the chopping. <laughs> What's a Loretta LaRoche specialty? <laughs> oh, well, spaghetti. I'm making bolognese tomorrow with my son because uh, he's visiting from Long Island. From Long Island, you know, yeah. He lives in the Hamptons. <clears throat> He's a great guy, and he comes and visits. And he and I are going to make uh, spaghetti bolognese tomorrow. Oh, I love you that. Know, yes. Chicken. I always love to make a really good chicken with all the accoutrements. Uh, you name it, I, I'll make it. How important is food to um, stress reduction? I know sometimes some people use it too much and go overboard where they, they use it as a numbing agent, but uh, the role that food plays in our lives. I mean, now you use a lot of people, they say, you know, you have a family and they're not even eating at the table. One takes the plate and goes in that bedroom. The other one takes right. the plate and goes in that bedroom and they're not together to enjoy the food and the camaraderie and conversation. Sharing. Uh, breaking bread together is incredibly important. In fact, they found, uh, they researched this and found that families who do that several times a week have children who have less problems with drugs and, uh, and early pregnancies. And uh, because you're, t you're helping each other, you're telling stories and sharing not only the food, but your life. Yes. So that's a, that's a very important thing to do. And the type of food I think we've gotten a little sick in the head about food because everything now has a special thing. I'm on keto. I'm on paleo. I'm on no dairy. I can't have any, uh, I can't, I can only lick the plate. I can't eat what's on the plate. Um, <laughs> we have dissected and cauterized and, uh, and, and, done surgery on food to the point where some of it doesn't even look like food anymore. No, it doesn't. Yeah. And I'm sure there are certain things that people uh, can't eat or, you know, that they're, they're harmful to them, whatever. But I think we got gluten crazy. Uh, you know, there are people who have gluten sensitivities, but oh. not as many as they they actually talk about. Because now everything, even toilet paper is gluten free. <laughs> How you does know? that work? <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I mean, my mother lived to be 99. My grandmother was 94. My great grandmother was 95. You know what they ate? 
regatta, sausage, <laughs> spaghetti. Uh, they had a lot of uh, plant-based things too, because that's how they grew up. Did they but have they, some red wine too? Every night. Yeah. Every night. Yeah. But now everything becomes a harbinger of evil. Yeah. Oh, you better not have that. I mean, milk can't even be milk anymore. It has no. to be made from oats. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, what are we going to have? Acorn milk soon? Maybe <laughs> acorn milk. Bark milk. I don't know what. <laughs> I know. It's, uh, it's a little interesting, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think it's interesting. I don't see longevity being increased by a lot of this. It's In actually fact, not. No, going it's going direction. the other way. It's yes. going the other direction. Yes. So eat a sausage. <laughs> yeah. Eat a sausage. <laughs> Life is short. Eat a sausage. Eat a sausage. <laughs> Don't wait till tomorrow to eat that sausage. <laughs> I know some people are going to say, oh, no, no, she shouldn't be saying things like that. Well, too bad I'm saying them anyway. I think, you know, I grew up on sausage. I'm still here. I didn't eat it every day, but I it was there. Well, that's the key. The moderation is what it's all right. about. Exactly. And the moderation has to be moderate. Even the moderation has to be moderated. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you think maybe another book is in the offing, huh? I don't know. I'd like for to. Kids, I like the idea for the kids. That's yeah. because kids are really struggling these days. I mean, first of all, they're seeing how the adults are treating each other and they're seeing all this craziness go on. And, you know, you've got a nine-year-old kid that's like, is this the way life is supposed to be? Is this how we're supposed to treat one another or not treat one another? So you, the kids today have a lot of overwhelm and talk about stress and right. so many things. Like it used to be that like when we're, I know when I was a kid, we didn't know every adult thing that was happening. We didn't know if there was a war happening or everything. We were kids. We were playing in the yard. We were in the pool. We were, you know, playing baseball, hide and seek. We were doing the kids stuff and we we're having a good time doing it. Now, you know, a kid, they can go up in their room and they can, if you, if the parent doesn't want them to know everything right away because they're only seven years old, that kid can go up in their room and the room looks like NASA and they can Google everything that the parent doesn't want them to necessarily know quite yet. Right. But you know, I, I fear that imagination is being lost. I mean, yes, yes, you do see a lot of it in mag magazines, people coming up with new things and new ways to dress and blah, blah, blah. But I know we used to go outside and make forts Yes. Make mud pies. Yes. Do all kinds of silly things and stay out all day. Yes. I mean, I've lived, I've lived in a neighborhood where I never see a kid. I never see anybody yeah. riding their bike, playing oh. ball, baseball, any, any of those things. I, I'm sure there are kids who are still doing those things, but where are they? Right. Right. You don't see them like you used to write. Exactly. They would be out in the yard and yeah, you know, we would have to be called in, you right. know, Jimmy and, dinner, you know, that type of thing. Right. And nature is a healing element for the body. Being outside is an incredibly important thing for everyone to do. Yes. I told right. people, and I'm sure you, you, you feel the same way that especially during this what we've been experiencing the last two years when it seems like the rug is being pulled out from underneath you or everything is just uh, going away and becoming unfamiliar um, and you're overwhelmed by it to go to the constants in life, go to the ocean and, and watch right. the sun rise and set and the tide of the ocean, the flow, go to nature, plant a garden. These are things the animals don't know. There's a pandemic, the birds, the squirrels, exactly. they don't know that any of this is going on. The ocean has no, knowledge of that the sun still comes up and goes down so if you think the world is ending go to the things all around you that still exist that are constant that were here many 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 years before we, we showed up. will be here many years after right yeah that's yeah. it what yeah. do you do how do, what are some things what are zen things for loretta laroche well i have a very zen house uh, I'm a Buddha-holic. I have Buddhas everywhere. 
and I have a very zen yard. My yard is uh, really pretty spectacular. Um, I've been in this house for 40 years, so the yard has grown with me. I've changed it into something that is more zen. And uh, I'll tell you, it was such a wonderful thing for me when I had COVID and I literally was sitting in my bedroom and I, I have a lot of windows in my bedroom and I could look outside and see all this greenery and my, uh, my Zen, some of my Zen statues and my gazebo. And I thought, this is very healing. I, I didn't feel as terrible as I would if I couldn't see outside. So I was lucky. Being outside to me is a big deal. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, your house also looks immaculate and, and, and spotless. <laughs> well, I, I am a pain in the neck about that. Uh, I love to have a clean house. Not, not, you know, I don't go around. I'm not obsessive. Compulsive. You're, not, you're not like following people with a dust. No, uh, no, with a dust pan, no. <laughs> but I like to walk in and feel that things are somewhat organized. Yeah. And I have a lot of artwork that uh, surrounds me from different places I've been. I, I've been in every state in the union and multiple countries. And I always try to bring back something that is uh, indigenous to that area. So, you know, I look around and I, and I see something from Arizona or something from uh, Australia. And it's, it's very comforting and, and, and fun. Yeah, see, I that's think that's people, people should do that. They should surround themselves with things that give you memories that make you feel good inside. That's so important, right? The, those comforts, those things that, and memories. Yes, it's very important. Right. Uh, don't put them away. Uh, celebrate them, right? And of course, I've had to learn how to be a, how to compromise my partner who I told you is a jazz musician is he's really a brilliant jazz musician but Madonna me what a slob <laughs> 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 I, I follow him I know where he is in the house by following the coffee stains he leaves on the floor <laughs> so how do you reconcile that how do you get through your day do you just oh. uh, swap <laughs> I'm like somebody from the Navy. I'm swabbing all the time. <laughs> Instead of squeezing, she's swabbing. <laughs> Squeeze and swab. Squeeze, Squeeze and swab. And, swab. Uh, <laughs> and, and so do you gently recommend, hey, you know, maybe pick up that towel that's on the floor. Uh, and is it heard as well, you recommend it? Or? I went from being sort of a dictator <laughs> getting pissed off and, you know, because I, I was by myself for six years. Right. So I, I didn't have to worry about anybody else doing anything to my surroundings. And uh, I had to get used to somebody who basically not, doesn't do it on purpose, but doesn't, it hasn't got the same visuals as I do. You know, I can walk in the house and if the picture is crooked, I will immediately see it. <laughs> He could have all the pictures. And that's, and that's not even in your house. That's when you go across the street. <laughs> right. That's it. You're, you're <laughs> fixing her pictures and her. <laughs> exactly. You know, me, but, I, I, I see them too. I do see when a picture is crooked and it throws things off, doesn't it? Yes. I, 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 I know. <laughs> I can't. I, it drives me crazy. But I mean, he's like, oh, whatever, whatever. <laughs> It doesn't matter. Well, okay. You're going to die soon. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it always comes back to that. It's full circle. It always comes back to that. That is amazing. Well, it makes me feel better if I have a more es 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 ethereal surroundings. Esoteric. And I know <laughs> esoteric, yes. Um, I just... Um, I, I, I had to adapt to, I mean, when I was having my implant surgeries and having not being able to do the things I used to be able to do, I had to adapt. If there was a dust bunny. I had to just watch it hop around. <laughs>
<laughs> but, you know, that's my nature. Uh, well, that's a beautiful way to be because a lot of people don't adapt. They, they don't know how to adapt and they're not willing to adapt. But when life gives you choices, either adapt or otherwise, the otherwise might not be so great. You either adapt or you die. Yes. Because right. adaptation gives you resiliency. If you don't adapt and, and become resilient, it, it's easier to perish. Yes, exactly right. Exactly right. What would be uh, one bit of Loretta LaRoche wisdom that you'd like to impart for our audience watching today that love it is on the Gym Master Show Live? We've been loving it. We've been commenting. Um Maybe who, are the, who are the Lovities? The Lovities are the, uh, I said about a year ago, and I think it was after you were a guest, I said the show has a lot of light, love, and levity. And I said it, Ever the New Yorker, too fast one day. And I said, Lovity. And then I said to the audience, okay, um, you guys are the Lovities. And then they said, we're your Lovity squad. You're Mr. Lovity. This is Lovity Hall, and the guests are the Lovities. So then I said to the audience, should we spell it L-O-V-E-I-T-Y, or should we drop the E because grammatically the E is incorrect? And they said, we're in a pandemic. Leave the darn E in there. We don't want the word love touched. So the uh -huh. viewers, the faithful viewers, are the Gym Master Show Lovities. That's and, great. Yeah, it just happened to happen that way. And you're a lovety. You've always been a lovety as well. And uh, what would be something you would suggest uh, somebody maybe that's watching live or watches this later on our YouTube channel? It'll be archived at Gym Masters TV on our YouTube channel to enjoy. Um, if they are struggling with something, if they are overwhelmed, if they are confused, if they are alone, I know the first would be do not get bamboo toilet paper. <laughs> that will make the scene rougher. Uh, You'll be bleeding. You will be bleeding. But what would be uh, a piece of uh, wit and wisdom that you would leave for our faithful well, I, viewers? I think you have to always ask yourself, how serious is this? And, you know, prioritize. If something really needs a solution, then work on it. Don't make it turn it all into a global war. Not everything is serious. In fact, I tell people, write down everything that you stress out about and prioritize which one pops up as the one that needs to, some work. Because some people will find a problem in, in, in a solution. <laughs> you know? And that, that to me is the most important thing we can do. Is yes. Think about what you're thinking about. Yes. And how important is it? Exactly right. It's beautifully said. Mr. George Burns joining us here. And he said uh, <laughs> he, he loved seeing you once again. <laughs> and you knocked, it out of, yeah, you knocked it out of the park as usual. He's got a cigar. He's got his red hanky. And, uh, <laughs> my aunt collected dolls. My mother's uh, oh sister. My God. I don't know if I ever told you, my mother's the youngest of 16. And there's only oh. 20 years difference between the oldest and the youngest. That's insane. Yeah. Could you imagine? It's uh, so my aunt Lillian collected dolls of all kinds. And when he turned 100, this collectible came out and it got passed down to me. So he makes his appearance towards the latter part of the show. I love it. In. And I love you. I love talking with you. Uh, I love you, Loretta, as well. It's always when we, the minute we were placed together in that studio at PBS. It was so automatic. We, we got each other and, you know, we, it was some serious business. You know, we, we needed to create uh fund raising and, and PBS right. pledges and get the phones ringing, but it was such an organic, authentic and real evening right. that the audience was, and it, we did it a couple of times, the audience responded and the crew and the, the staff and other talent, they were, in stitches. <laughs> well, it, it's all, it's also the ambiance that we, we created. I think people will respond to you when they feel that your energy is not loaded with arrogance and, yes. and fear yes. and, and, you know, the need to be important. If you just say, you know, we're all in this together and let's yes. have fun. 
That's what it's all about. Exactly, my friend. That is exactly what it's all about. And uh, speaking of all in this together, I know I showed this in the beginning, and I think I might have popped it on the last time you're here, but it's one of my favorite photos of us. I, I love, love it. that shot. Look just, at how young I was. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? That was only 10 minutes ago. <laughs> that was our that was that was the uh promo for our show, right? <laughs> I love it. If only, right? Yeah. Uh, what can yeah. you do? That was fantastic. There was the after party after one of your fabulous yeah. uh, concert events and really, yeah. really love it. Awesome. You are uh, not only a riot, but you're a blessing. And again, you come from uh, with a level of experience that is uh, underneath all of the humor. And uh, I really, uh, you're one of my favorite people. And I know oh, I've said it a you. thousand times. And well, uh, you got to find the bless in the mess. That's right. You got to find the bless in the mess, my friend. Exactly. Uh, we will keep the porch light on. Uh, as I always say, I hope the show met whatever expectations you had and you enjoy the time with me as much as I have with you. All I can say was I was glad that we could do it. <laughs> yeah. If they only know what we went through, right? You really had uh, <laughs> snowstorms, blizzards. Uh, um, Crazy. Uh, yeah, a lot of crazy stuff, but you made it. You are a trooper. You are resilient. Well, um, now I know there's a hot spot, too. That was a very exciting epiphany. See, the 5G and the hot spot is what made the difference for you. Yeah. So uh, do yeah. not, whatever you do, Loretta, never lose the hot spot. I won't. I, I'm glad I found it. <laughs> <laughs> it took this long to find the hot spot. It's taken years, <laughs> but now I know. But now that's right. She'll never leave that chair again because that's where the hot spot is at its peak. That's where your hot spot is at your peak. Is in that yep. orange chair. That that's cool my chair. chair. That's your chair. We uh, we love you, Loretta Laroche. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a wonderful uh, Lisa, rest of the day, and thank you very much. And Lisa goodbye, says, everyone who's watching. Has, absolutely, this has to be one of my favorite episodes. Great picture of you too. And uh, that is Lisa, Kathleen in New York City. Thank you, Loretta, for being here again. Great show. Thank uh, you. Yeah. And have You're fun. Best revenge. Yes. And hopefully, because uh, we're not that far from one another, we'll get a chance to break bread and see each other soon. I would really oh, love I that. So. Yeah. It's been, I too, it's been too long. It's been too long, you know? You've got to come and visit. I would love to do that. Absolutely. I love you. You're the best. Thank and thanks know. for spending all this time with us. We oh, really, really thanks. appreciate it. Thank all you. Right? Take care. Take care now. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. <laughs> <laughs>
this, that, or the other thing. It's life. This is a, a show that's like a, a talk show, an entertainment lifestyle variety talk show series. So we hope you enjoy this and we try to provide a variety of things for you guys. I know they, they say, and I, I hear it a lot, Jim, Jim, you should be niche, everything niche. Pick one topic and just stay with that topic. Yeah, but life isn't necessarily like that. You don't live in a bubble or a bowl or a box, right? So, you know, that's why we have something for everybody. We always learn and we always have a good time uh, as we are doing these shows and presenting these shows for you. And this was really, really cool. And as Loretta says, life is short. Wear your party pants. (laughs) <laughs> absolutely right hope you guys enjoyed it those of you watching live don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel whether you're watching us live or you're watching this uh in the archives because we save all the episodes right here on our youtube channel which is jim masters tv you see that subscribe red button there click that and be sure some some folks have said to me Jim, I didn't know about this episode or I missed that episode or I didn't realize that guest was on and I missed it and I wanted to be there when the show was live so I can interact. The key to it is when you subscribe to that YouTube channel, this one here, Jim Masters TV, you will see a bell icon. It looks, it's right there on the YouTube channel. You'll see it underneath every episode and you'll see it at the header the beginning, you know, our homepage for our YouTube channel, you'll see a bell icon. Make sure you click that because when you click that, you'll receive notifications. You'll receive an alert uh, letting you know about all the episodes. I even had a, I had a friend on the other day who said he wanted to see when Kathy Garver was on from Family Affair. She was on the other night and um, he missed the episode. He didn't know it was on. And I said, oh, are you subscribed to the channel? And oh, we're friends. Uh, he was even a guest on the show. He goes, uh, oh, I've been subscribed ever since you know you created the channel, which actually the Jim Masters TV channel was created way before year of credit, I think in 2008 or nine. And then we created the Jim Masters Show Live series on the YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV in uh, like April of 2020. But um, he said, I didn't realize that uh, he, Kathy was going to be on the show. So I said, oh, well, have you clicked the notification bell? The what? And it says that little notification bell that is on all the episodes. It looks like a little bell icon. Click that. And, and on our YouTube channel, the homepage, click that. Because uh, when you do, you'll be notified about all the episodes. So he has done that and he's now notified on all of our episodes and our epic series. And we love that. So gang, uh, this is terrific and uh, good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Thank you all. See you later as well. Yes, we have an amazing guest. We This is a double lovety day for those of you watching live. We have two episodes we're doing today. This episode with humorous stress management expert, author, and so much more, Loretta LaRoche. She was a blast. And then coming up in uh, a little over two hours, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, we're back with, as we continue, continue double lovety day, that's a mouthful. Um, we have supermodel and actress Cindy Hetzel joining us here. Yes, she is fantastic. And she's going to be here live on the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series in just about a little over two hours. We're going to have some dinner. Uh, again, we had a busy day today. I was on an all day television news shoot in the TV studios, uh, interviewing a guest expert that was in. And, uh, and then yesterday we were up in Brimfield, Massachusetts for another TV show that I host, which is a lifestyle travel series. And we were, if you see on Facebook, uh, and I think Instagram and Twitter at Jim Masters TV, some of the foods that we were trying, uh, for that series. And, Ooh, it was so delicious because it was a restaurant. Um, I wear many hats in the industry, uh, television, radio, stage and film and love it all. Uh, sometimes it gets crazy. It's so busy all the time. I'm always running here, there and everywhere, but I love it. And I love engaging with all of you, you know, by starting this series, uh, I've met a lot of fabulous people, all of you, the viewers who watch and support the series. 
And uh, a lot of the guests like Loretta LaRoche, she's been a friend. We've been friends for years. So it's always great when she pops on. This is her second visit. But uh, some of the other guests that are brand new, it's always a pleasure to welcome them. And they are here as well. And uh, we, if they weren't, you know, a personal friend before they came on the Gym Masters Show Live, we become friends as a result of the Gym Masters Show Live, which is cool. Christine Clifton was watching and she says, Lorda has some really fantastic and helpful tips to life and does it with such a great sense of humor. Wonderful conversation. Lovely hall. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Christine Clifton in North Carolina and everybody that's watching live and everybody that is uh, going to watch this later in the archives. If you are watching this in the archives, stay right there. Another episode of the Gym Master Show Live comes up in just a moment. We're going to wrap up. we got to have some dinner, and it's so good to see you guys. I'll be back at 7 Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific for supermodel and actress. She's all excited, and so are we. Cindy Hetzel is joining us here from New York City, and we're excited about that. Love you all, gang. Don't forget, again, if you enjoyed this episode, give it a like. That's that thumbs up you sign you see on our YouTube channel underneath this episode. Give it a thumbs up like. And do drop a comment on the YouTube channel underneath all the episodes you enjoy. Uh, when you leave a comment actually on the YouTube channel, it helps us big time because uh, the episode gets blasted out around the world even further when you give us a like and when you leave a comment underneath every episode. So thanks for doing that. Many of you have been doing that and we really, really appreciate it, gang. One more time, humorous stress expert and author Loretta LaRoche in the house today. Lots of humor, lots of great advice making us think about life and not stressing out about some of the craziness of everyday life. So great to have my friend here. We'll have her back again. This was her second visit. We're going to wrap. Thank you for being here. I'm your host, Jim Masters. Thank you for your time this time till next time. And to spread the word about our show, keep doing that, gang. Share the links on your uh, social media pages. Let everybody know that we're here. That helps us big time as well. And uh, we love you all. You enjoy the rest of uh, your day, and we will be back. Again, for those of you that want to join us live, we've got a great show coming up. It's 7 Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, and we'll be here. I, I usually say I'll just sit in here in the chair and just wait for you, but I'm starving. I haven't had breakfast, lunch, and now we're going to have dinner, and it's almost 5 o'clock. Uh, I had to zip right out to the TV studio. Didn't have time. I think I had a quick blueberry scone and a cup of coffee and then had to get to the TV studio for the news TV news uh, shoot. And, um, and then I had to zip back here to uh, come into the studio here to get this show going. And uh, Loretta's Wi-Fi was a little funky. That's why I know you've been waiting for her to be on and she was scheduled to be on a couple of weeks ago, a couple of times, but um, the internet for her has been crazy. So her son is there with her and you probably saw them and she has two sons. You saw them and probably in the back behind her, uh, they had helped her get things connected with the router so she can get back on, uh, which was perfect. We thank uh, Loretta and we thank her sons as well. All right, gang. Yes, it's time to eat. Yes. It's my stomach is rumbling. So we got to eat. We've been doing a lot of talking since, uh, eight o'clock this morning. <laughs> so we're going to, we're going to pause on the talking. We'll, we'll save it for seven o'clock tonight. We'll see you again soon, gang. We'll see you if you're here at seven Eastern four Pacific. Otherwise we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for being with us on the gym master show live. Take care, be well. And as we always say, cheers.